Hello and welcome to Boom Explains. The Union Budget 21-22 was presented yesterday. That's the 1st of February 2021 to a, a warm reception, at least from the stock markets, which shot up dramatically on the day the project was presented and even more so, more than a thousand points the day after. Now, the question, of course, is what is this union budget really achieving? Does it make a difference to yours and my life? If so, in what way? And more importantly, this does come on the heels of the COVID-19 pandemic. And coming as it does, does it uh, really address the big economic and health shocks that this country and the economy has had to face, like, of course, uh, many other countries in the world? So those are some of the key questions we are putting. And uh, who better to answer those questions, even as we try and understand what was the direction that this union budget and therefore the finance minister and thus the government of India intends to take with this uh, economy as a whole. Uh, Shankar Ayer, uh, journalist, columnist and uh, author of the book The Gated Republic. Vivek Kaul, columnist, author and economic commentator also of many books including on bad banks. Thank you both for joining me. Uh, Shankar, why don't you go first? Your uh, key takeaways from what you saw uh, in the <coughs> union budget statement and speech. My key takeaway is that uh, there is a sense of recognition about the inventory of sins that had piled up. And this budget actually clears some of that inventory. There is a transparency about how they are going to uh, address some of the issues. I think they've had some idea uh, that, you know, for instance, the shifting of off budget items into the budget. It's both uh, optics and economics. Obviously, you don't pay subsidy by borrowing at higher levels. You know, Government of India can borrow it cheaper than FCI can from a uh, national small savings. So some of the thinking has gone through. I like the uh, aspect of transparency, openness. Of course, it also enables the government to give a political message that they've spent a lot of money. Uh, and uh, that expansionary optics that they have presented also allows them to clean up some of the stuff. Now, if you actually look at the budget carefully, the expansion is not uh, so much about what they did, but also about what they couldn't do. So uh, of, of the total deficit that 9.8, about 3,10,000 crores is FCI, about 1,70,000 crores is failed disinvestment about 30% uh, or odd. I mean, final figures of tax collections we'll know only later, but for good four or five months, GST was hit. So, you know, let's assume 40% tax uh, this thing. So right. it, it's, it's a very good place to plan the next few years. Uh, although, I mean, I still find the 1,70,000 crore disinvestment target rather ambitious. So, uh, are you saying your key takeaway is transparency, Shankar? I mean, there's nothing else that uh, really jumped out from in terms of what will affect uh, the average uh, person on the street? Well, you know, all plans are ifs and buts stories. So, if the capex happens, if construction starts, uh, if there is offtake of cement, steel, creation of jobs, then you assume that in the peri-urban and rural economy, people will buy motorbikes, cars, whatever consumption will go up, and then there will be revenues and there will be growth. Now, I am optimistic about the road projects, but I'm not so optimistic about the other capex that they're talking about. So the potential is there. Uh, I'm happy about the direction that investment-led thing that they have done, because in India, oh. Transfer of money is always a difficult thing, whether people will spend, not spend. And anyway, both theories, whether it is the percolation theory or the direct transfer to consumption theory, are both being disputed. So, Okay, got it. Uh, Vivek, uh, your thoughts on uh, what you saw and what you took away? I think, I mean, I'll agree with uh, Shankar on the transparency bit, uh, given the fact that this has been going on for at least more than a decade. Uh, the fact that the government decided to clean up its uh, books and uh, at one go, I mean, that uh, really was a surprising part because uh, that clearly added, uh, you know, because they are now declaring food subsidies properly and not uh, hiding behind cash accounting, uh, that added at least 3 lakh crore to the fiscal deficit. 
and this in a year where uh, you know tax revenues have crashed uh, disinvestment receipts are uh, around 15% of what they were expected to be and uh, non tax revenue i mean nobody surprisingly has talked about it uh, you know the the dividend the profit that uh, you know uh, the public sector enterprises share with the government i mean that has also crashed big time so i think this is uh, this has been a bold move and uh, and it's surprising because uh, you know the narendra modi government isn't really known to make bold moves on uh, the economic front uh, so i think that 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 was uh, my one big takeaway and then there are uh, you know a few ideas which uh, they are trying out uh, you know they're trying to sell excess land uh, with public sector enterprises they are trying to uh, get in a bad bank uh, but a development financial institution is being planned i mean one may agree or one may not agree with these ideas but at least there is some thought that's uh, gone behind the entire thing which wasn't the okay. case always so okay so uh, uh, vivek let me uh, uh, ask you to for our viewers just give us a sense on what the balance sheet looks like so you talked about one of the aspects of income which is the non tax revenue what are the uh, key revenue sources for a government or this government at a po this point of time and what are the key expenditure heads and also what's not worked out thanks to covid uh, okay so you know uh so if 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 you sort of looked at the newspapers today morning uh, most newspapers had uh, sort of led with the idea that the government is basically spending a lot of money in this budget and uh, you know acting as a spender of the last resort and you know then trying to push up the economy but when i looked at the numbers in the morning today and uh, you know to my surprise i found that uh you know there is very little fiscal expansion that is happening between this year and next uh, even this year uh, you know what is being passed off as a fiscal expansion was planned pre covid it wasn't like covid happened and then uh, you know suddenly the uh, you know expenditure went up uh, so net net i think uh, this entire idea that uh, this is uh, you know uh, a budget which uh, comes with fiscal expansion is really not uh, true at least the numbers right. don't show that Uh, and not to the extent that the finance minister has been you know talking about wherein she said that you know we have been trying to spend spend and spend uh, that's not true uh, uh, the other thing is uh, if if you look at uh, on the on on the um, uh, expenses side uh, the the allocation to uh, a scheme like uh, uh, the national rural employment guarantee scheme has been cut uh, from around uh, 1 lakh 12000 crore last year to around 73000 uh, sorry 1 lakh 12000 crore this year to 73000 crore next year which i sort of found surprising given the fact that uh, this year the scheme has done a decent amount of good for uh, uh, for the rural economy uh, the the ambitious thing is is again the disinvestment target where they, they you know they want to earn 1 lakh 75000 crore and sell three public sector banks and one general insurance company and we are not talking about selling stakes here we are talking about outright sales now that is something that has never happened and or you know maybe it happened back at the time when arun shore was disinvestment minister where uh, you know few companies did get sold but it hasn't happened you know since then and i really don't know whether uh, you know that's going to happen so i mean they may okay. end up earning the money thanks to the big bang lic ipo and a few other if they are able to sell bpcl and air india and stuff like that but uh, i don't think they'll be able to sort of sell all these companies that they plan to so right and and the administrative machinery to get all this going is also it's, it's, uh, maybe not something that we can uh, is that is that what you're saying yeah i mean see if you look at the fact that uh, you know this year the plan was to earn 2 lakh 10000 crores through disinvestment uh, right. they say they'll end up the year with 32000 crore Uh, the number as of 20th january was around 15800 crore or something like that now uh, the point the explanation is that this is because of covid but COVID, you know yeah. covid was uh, i mean covid is still there but if you look at covid from the point of view of the stock market it was largely a problem in march and april i mean since since may the markets have done very very well i mean you know right now we are we are almost touching 50000 points again so i don't think that you know right. it it probably got stuck in the you know the, the rigmarole of the bureaucracy and the red tapeism 
and which is why the government wasn't able to raise even you know probably half the money that it should have so right right so the alacrity that should have been was not there uh, shankar uh, can i put the same question to you so uh, to a lay person trying to understand this what is the balance sheet looking like uh, on the income side first and then the expenditure side and where do we stand as a country today particularly since we are still in the shadow of covid-19 and all the associated expenditure particularly in, on health that uh, is uh, looming upon us okay let me put this piece by piece uh, so let's look at the uh, expenditure numbers and an attempt has been made to show as if health budget has sort of skyrocketed but a part of it is actually finance commission grants uh, i am very happy about the water uh, allocation for uh, pipe water beyond that the health budget is net net almost the same i mean you know uh, one must recognize that there is a need the need has been underlined uh, unlike in the past when you know uh, it wasn't uh, that much of a priority so i applaud that uh, if you look at uh, the disinvestment i mean so let let's look at the expenditure again uh, and so some of the expenditure that they are showing they may or may not be able to do it if there is a capacity issue if you know uh, you would know that uh, state governments were given money and that money is all parked in t bills and they are unable to so a large part of this expenditure also depends on the capacity of state governments to execute so expenditure may not go that much higher now coming to income i do not think that this 175000 crore story may play out uh, i do hope they get the lic listing and if they have to list lic they will obviously have to sell idbi bank to whoever is willing to take it because no insurance company in the world has a bank attached to its tail so uh, that would be one i am not sure about the sale of the other two public sector banks and you know this requires some amount of thinking uh, on what they want to sell and there will be you know in india you right. can't sell psbs which were earlier community banks there will be a lot of uh, pushback on that yeah. the third part that uh, i find interesting is that they have understated the revenue targets in some ways so there might be an upside there but a lot of that upside depends on how they plan the vaccination program and how they accelerate the engagement in the economy so that those are questions that are there so it's it's kind of work in progress to me uh, the good thing about the budget is that they didn't try any stunts uh, except for in their announcements of the i mean so development finance institutions i think are a dead so, end because we've tried this some five six times and stuff like that so uh, the announcements are good they signal that they are willing to all of these ideas have been discussed in the last 10 years so if you're looking for originality you'll have to knock some other door <laughs> and uh, okay so uh, let me get a broader uh, view from uh, both of you and and chakar uh, you first you know uh, we went from eight quarters of a slowdown into a lockdown so things were not very good even before covid now where is this economy going and uh, and that will hopefully answer the other questions including one that you posed in your column uh, shankar where you said that the budget should invest in human capital enable and empower the economy signals that they will invest in human capital but if you look at the skills development budget or the ability of the government to do get the apprenticeship program going so one of the big problems of this government is their inability or inadequacy in their ranks to get any conversation going with different communities or segments of the economy it's a hard task for them to be able to have a linear conversation they are used to hierarchical conversations top down conversation which is what's happening with the farm loan bill but uh, with the farm reforms bill but let's not go there so um, the uh, investment in education you know you would think that they would bring in a plan to induct technology uh, because students uh, you know 
the arrival of covid has enabled us to understand use of technology in education and that technology could could have been inducted in terms of to bridge the teacher absenteeism and various 110 other quality teaching programs and all that stuff i don't see signs of that i don't know whether they have a best practice rule book a blue book to follow in the similarly in right. the health sector i would expect them to use uh, telemedicine and all that so those are aspirational things that they they could have mentioned in you know package that idea i don't see that so I, human capital is yeah i think they will do something i mean you know but they are still to come to terms with the fact that this world is changing algorithmic automation will retrench human interface we are still stuck with some mean years of schooling of six and a half years and students piling out of millions piling out of the schools either can't add or can't spell words it's it's, it's really sad i mean you know i i came out of a government school so i know you know i feel saddened by uh, all of this so human capital no go and i'm not very right. uh, optimistic beyond the signaling okay uh, vivek how 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 are you seeing it i mean again you know if uh, if an alien landed uh, on uh, in uh, mumbai today or delhi and said okay what happened yesterday what would you say uh, in terms of growth or over i mean directionally where, what was this budget about what did it do did it address the issues of the past is it uh, going to take us somewhere or is it i, I really want your views rather than let me not interject i mean, I mean you know uh, i mean i find the idea that budgets would take us anywhere is slightly overrated and uh, okay. i guess i mean i i said this yesterday uh, or you know in in one of the discussions that see i guess what and i mean um, you know all of us understand this that what has happened in the last 10 to 15 years is that as the importance of uh, the budget for the media has gone up the importance of the budget for the economy has gone down and uh, and 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 i you know to me i mean i i look at the budget more as uh, you know a, a presentation of uh, the statement of financial accounts uh, of the government uh, you know done in as uh, a uh, right way as 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 possible and along with that i mean you obviously make a few uh, policy announcements so i don't think this budget or any budget for that matter is going to change the uh, you know the direction of of the economy in uh, uh, any right. uh, major way so okay so uh, last set of questions to both of you shankar so you know uh, we we uh, saw a big economic shock uh, as as have other countries now that uh, takes us back uh, we wanted to uh, hit a 5 trillion dollar uh, gdp target we wanted to reach somewhere near china so all of that now is slipping away what does that really mean i mean target is good but uh, is is it going to change uh, our lives if we don't reach that target uh, where are we lagging then so for about 10 12 10 years or so a single problem in the indian economy everybody is kicked the can down the road which is how to manage the financial sector and how to get government out of the business of lending money which is fraught with all kinds of rents crony capitalism all sort of stuff so and we have not continuously sort of done some amount of lipstick on the pig on the npa issue uh, the reserve bank of india said 13.5% could be the number with or 15 lakh crores would be the npa around september i don't see the budget addressing that issue so money makes the mayor go round runs the economy and i know that gap sort of worries me uh, in terms of where we are on the 5 trillion dollars i mean the 5 trillion dollar story was an aspirational target i don't think they expected or anybody expected us to reach 5 trillion by 2024 now we will be happy to reach 2019 2020 levels in 2024 and the good thing about the budget is all those ideas that have now been put out even if sort of a quarter of them or a third of them get implemented you will have some momentum having said that private final final consumption which is private consumption is what drives the indian economy domestic consumption is what propels the growth and for that i think the announcements will not be enough see this government does one thing very well it executes intention very well intention is always well executed packaged i mean you know highway projects for five pole bound states you know political politics and economics nicely blended everything 
but when it comes to implementation they really struggle unless the prime minister puts his weight down so two or three things that the prime minister put his weight behind is ujwala jandhan yojana rural electrification they took off but where the general john doe of the government has to manage i think they really struggle to get anything going and okay i'm happy to see the bad loan bad loan whatever thing you know in the budget uh, i am happy to see dfis in the budget i, I think frankly it's a dead end uh, but and no and no taxes and no taxes yeah i mean you know so and, and no direct taxes no direct taxes and no taxes on dollar billionaires as i had hoped but Uh, that's a separate story but uh, the the thing that we must and i wanted to just touch on what vivek said that much of the reforms that need to be done are in the domain of states and we invest focus so much on the central the union budget and uh, even if we focused a fraction of it on the 30 state budgets we would really get going unfortunately we don't Okay, so that's a, a trigger for us. At least the big states, uh, the big uh, larger states with the larger budgets, uh, we should now focus on, and more so as we go along. Uh, Vivek, uh, last question for you. So uh, uh, I think most of what happened or didn't happen uh, within the budget is clear. But the stock markets reacted uh, very well, uh, not just yes. the same day, but even the next day, where you would think that they it would have typically found the fine print and then uh, hammered it back. But so far, uh, it seems to be holding. So what's what's what gives? i guess i mean uh, you know fund managers have offered uh, plenty of reasons for it but i think i mean in my mind there is just one simple reason you know uh, through uh, the last week uh, the stock market fell and uh, uh, from what i could gather talking to investors uh, all around was the fact that they were afraid of uh, a wealth tax or some sort of a covid cess or uh, majorly a change uh, in in the tax rate on long term capital gains Are being pushed through uh, so that the government could earn more money uh, during the course of the next financial year. Dollar billionaire tax, as Shankar was saying. Yeah. Ha, even 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 that. Uh, so uh, so so none of these things happened. So it is for the stock market. Uh, it was like you know no news is good news. So you know they they were they had already discounted for the fact that all this is going to happen. And when it did not happen, so obviously it's it's going back to where it was. And Now it, that does it, not it, mean that these levels are justified. But then that's another story wanted, for another. Want period. to add one line to what Vivek said? Go ahead. that the stock market is happy about what didn't happen not about what happened that's the that's the interesting part of that thing and i like the, like the uh, the line that you know that you, you, the, from fear to relief <laughs> that's what's yeah. happening in fact right. uh, one fund one fund manager even called the budget uh, from sita to geeta so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay on that note uh, we do hope of course that something does happen and uh, the the economy uh, gets to a position where it can start moving and recovering from uh, the shocks of covid and beyond uh, shankar ayer and vivek call thank you so much for joining me thanks thank going for having us